using the voice as a tool. If we can start to allow the voice to be fully expressed in situations where maybe there's other loud noises, then we start to claim that space that I am in. I start to open myself up to how I perceive myself in this moment. So if I breathe into that and I allow it to be as it is, I allow my breath to be part of my voice as I speak. And as I breathe in, I lean into how it feels. I lean into what feels. I allow all of that to sound as I speak. And the slower I speak, the easier it is to invite the breath. If I speak too fast, there's not enough time for me to vibrate on each vowel. Even if I go really slow, if I go into a tone here, I get it. I get the time to vibrate. And when I vibrate, I can choose to feel how it vibrates in my body and then relax towards that vibration. You can put a hand there. You can ask someone else to put a hand there and it's really helpful. So every time I breathe in, I allow myself to expand my body so that more of my inner body is filled with breath my inner body, my body. So I can make the lungs really big, right? And then I can extend them a little bit more and push everything out in the whole body. And then I come in contact with all of those organs because my lungs are pushing them. Oh. 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 And here I can choose to activate them by vibrating with them. And then the sensation for me, it's like I've entered another room, another space for my breath to lean on. So if I try to speak from this place, I can even, like when I do the toning, there's a lot of with my muscles of my belly, my, my chest, lower chest or upper belly. Here I kind of move the air around my body. Ah. And then as I breathe in to the belly, to the diaphragm, opening up the diaphragm and then lifting, like you're doing push-ups with your diaphragm. It's just to stretch the amount of air that you can hold. And what I notice is the more I push, the more I open, the, the more voice I get to produce because there is more air in my body. So what I'm actually doing is that I'm forming air with my vocal cords. I am, the air passes through my vocal cords and I get to uh, ride the wave of the breath, the vibrations. And my whole body is my whole body is aware of these vibrations so i can also speak to my body parts by vibrating with them so thinking of my feet as i make a sound oh, oh. to feel into what body part is speaking. So you can either focus on one body part or you can explore what body part is speaking. This is an interesting concept because that means our body parts can speak. And I would say yes. So what I mean by that is that the organs or the body parts, they carry cellular memory of how the cells has been duplicating. And these cells, as they were duplicating, they carry 
the char characteristics of the energy imprint that was done to the cell before them. Just like our kids looks like our kids. And when you've been creating your body from your reaction to your environment, it hasn't been a conscious creation. So the idea here is to consciously create. It is to feel what is there. To really recognize what is going on for me in this moment. So it's recognizing the, the sound, yeah? So I recognize the breath in my body and I recognize the sound. From that information that I get, meaning how it felt for me to do that, to breathe that breath and to sing that sound, the feeling from that will tell me. It will give me the information that I need to understand how I felt to do that sound, to do that breath. And when I allow my body to feel what it feels, and I allow my mind to understand that it is a gift, and I start to explore the gift, then I will be granted the gift. And the, the gift is different every time with every person. So the invitation is just to look at, look at your breath. Breathe in and notice how in the body you are breathing. Are you breathing into your lungs? Are they expanding fully? Can you stretch them? Can you open them up? Gently, slowly, just one breath at a time and then with some breaths in between. So, so I just had a, a oh, something that I want to sound. Oh, something that I didn't fully understand. Oh, and it feels like this. Oh, something else came up and it sounds like this. And then there was an open window and I stopped. Oh. And more stuff. So when you start processing, it just keeps on going because it knows like, oh, I wanna, I also wanna go. So, ah, uh, let her go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And there I learned something. So I valued friendship. I disregarded the main event, the secondary event, the third event, and I sat down with my friends, with my friend and friends, with my friend, and I befriended another acquaintance, like that. That's what happened. Oh. Here's the boat. So, oh. I'll keep walking. There's a boat going between these uh, three places in Hammarby Sjöstad in Stockholm, Sweden. They, they're linking together three hubs and the boat is for free and this is people connecting to town and then because that's the center, that's, that's Stockholm. And then this side, the south, is just outside Stockholm. It's like the border. So there's a boat connecting the border. I love it. It's like, because then we can enter and Stockholm mainland on foot. We don't need to bring the car. But uh, now I chose to walk because walking felt good for me. And to have the opportunity to speak loudly and to explore what it means to feel energies and also to welcome myself into the act of creating the energy. So. Again, we can do this, we can choose, we can create, we can determine the energy, our voice, our breath. And then we can feel into, tap into what is going on right now. I open my eyes, I open my ears, I open my heart and I, and I really take in what's here. This is 
to be done in a safe container. I mean, when I'm out on the streets, I, I like to play with open my heart. But it's nice to have open eyes and ears and maybe like less, uh, my heart for myself. But then when I see that someone smiles at me, I can wave back and then maybe exchange a few words. And that's usually super nice when people are open. And then when people are not, I, I, it's better for me to keep for myself. It's a, it's a, it's a defense strategy to keep my heart from... Yeah, it's up to me to protect my heart. And same with opening my legs to someone. That's also has to be done in a specific container. It's uh, too much in my life. It has been used as a way to confirm the partnership. It has been like I've, I've given my cock away to the woman. Like, this is, this is your cock. I basically said, this is your cock. But then I haven't taken responsibility for my cock. And uh, my cock hasn't been very happy with that. So, of course, the cock has been trying all kinds of stuff like to get out of the, of the misery <laughs> of not being praised and adored and uh, trained and honed and loved. I, I didn't put that in. I, I didn't give myself that. I was waiting for someone else to give me that, but no one gave it to me. So it's up to me to give that to myself. I, I owe it to myself to give myself that. Yes. Oh. And um, the, the power of the cock is really applicable in most situations. I haven't done all situations. I want to say all situations because it is how we are directing the energy. The energy is there. Yeah, energy never disappears. It is there. So either we use energy to push that energy down when it comes and exhausts ourselves, or we allow the energy to flow and we direct it upwards. We allow the energy, the, the feeling of the cock and the horniness. We allow ourselves to feel it and scream it. I mean, it's the best way. If you scream it, you move it, you move it. It's like, it's the way to do it. And you might need to learn to scream. I can definitely teach you that. You can, you can also do a scream where you break your throat and that's okay, it's gonna heal. I mean, I actually haven't read any scientific studies about this, but my own experience is the, the throat, it gets overused sometimes, especially when screaming. And then it builds itself up, like any kind of wound that you get. So, uh, the important thing is when you scream is to have your core activated. <laughs> so to scream from this place is actually very liberating. So what happens in a situation where your horniness goes up to a 9 out of 10, and you're, if you're a man, you're on your way to ejaculation and then you can choose to scream from that place of the sexual tension. The sexual tension. You move into that and you allow that to sound. And this way you can also uh, use your cock energy, even if you're a woman, your cock energy you can use in your voice. And this energy is very usable in most situations. But then you can also, and that's a parenthesis in this conversation, but you can also use your womb energy to speak. And I will not go too much into the womb speaking, but that's also so beautiful to, to get to know, to learn, and to embrace that part of you as well. That part of us. That part of us. 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 Yes. So, I think I lost it thread a little bit because I went the other way.
you could say. So coming back to the energy that I'm speaking of as the cock energy, it has doesn't have to mean horniness. Uh, doesn't mean has to be sexual. It can also be frustration. It can also be movement. It can also be power. Like it's it's a, it's an energy that is um, created to fuck or kill, basically. That's the extreme of it. And then you can add a spice of it. Like you know, you have the cayenne pepper. If you don't know cayenne pepper, it's a hot pepper. It's like chili, basically. And cayenne pepper, it's it's uh, the size of the of the jar that I have is big enough that I only need to take a minimum amount of what's in the whole uh, bottle. So I used to spray, I sprinkle a little bit, little bit like choo, 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 for my whole stew. And then my whole stew tastes cayenne. So the same thing here. I don't need to add all of the power. I can choose to sprinkle, to allow the fire to be a twinkling flame that invigorates my speaking, that gives my speaking an edge. And uh, we do this consciously or unconsciously, meaning that some, especially men, they have a tendency to be in the cock energy by default. Okay? That means, that means, if it's done unconsciously, they don't know, right? And if they don't know anything else, they think it's normal and they wonder, why is everyone else so mad? Like, why is no one speaking? I'm like, I'm speaking here and no one is speaking back to me. Like, what the fuck? Come on, people, don't be so mad. Hey, you, what do you feel? Or they maybe won't say what you feel. They maybe would say, what's up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and, and the person might be so overwhelmed with this energy that he or she is just like, I don't know what to say. It's like, it's too much. It's too much. And, and the person is just like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I can't even pronounce these words. It's just what I'm thinking in my mind. And the person asking gets totally wild because it's like, why are you ignoring me? So that, that's played out a, a big difference. And uh, that is the difference between the, the activation and the deactivation. So it means you can choose. And if you don't choose consciously, it means you choose unconsciously. Oh, wow. 